final leg. Now, there were a plethora of different events all around the world in the sprints, jumps, and hurdles, but we're gonna be talking about a couple athletes who made some significant progress this past weekend that should be getting a little bit more spotlight. Let's jump into it. First off, we are talking about Kyra Jefferson. Now, what happened? Well, at the New York City Grand Prix, she was running the 400 meters and she ran a season's best of 51.45 seconds. She finished second place behind Linda Irby, who won the race in 51.38 seconds. Now, why does this matter for Kyra Jefferson? Like I said, this is a season's best for Jefferson. This is her close to her personal best, which is 51.50 seconds set all the way back in 2015. So for her to set that season's best and be close to her personal best is a huge accomplishment. Now, she had run the 400 meters a couple times over the past few years, especially back when she was in Florida, but she never really specialized in it. Once she became a pro, of course, she was the 2018 NCAA champion in the 200 meters. When she got to the pro, though, she switched over to the 400 meters, and 2022 is the first year she's really been taking it serious. So, not saying she's going to make the 400 meter team, right? There's a long way to go from 51.5 seconds all the way to probably mid 50s, that's or even low 50s that's gonna take it to make the team, but this bowls very well for her and shows that she is making progress as she's going through her first year in that 400. I mean, you just ran, well, you ran a season's best and you're yes. like 500s off your personal best, yes. right? Yes, that's how I'm like, I'm happy, but I'm like, come on. <laughs> Cause it's like so close, but yeah, yeah. It's, good. it's coming together like it needs to. Well, talk to me, cause of course at Florida you were, you know, you set the collegiate record in the 200, mm -hmm. but now you're in the 400. So talk to me about that transition. Um, well, I switched coaches. I'm with Dennis Mitchell now, Star Athletics, um, and we just decided this year that we should try the four. I've always had the strength for it. I just needed to learn how to run the race. So I'm just trying to combine like my 200 speed with the strategy of the four so i'm just getting used to it as i go do you like competing in the four because i i mean after the race you're like you're like dead <laughs> but you're hitting some good times i'm gonna be honest i like doing the four i never thought i would say i like doing the four but um it definitely has its challenges but i do like it i hate practicing for it but i do like running it nice do you ever get to drop back down to the two or will um, you ever get that chance i probably will next year this year i just want to focus Solely on the four going into USA's and just trying to get that PB. Nice. And then what confidence does this give you, right? Setting a almost personal best, getting that season's best leading into USA's. It lets me know that we're doing the right things. Um, I wasn't supposed to come to this meet. I actually was going to shut it down after our meet at home, but I kind of begged <laughs> to see if I can do it. And I'm just really happy that I'm staying really consistent. Nice. Next up, we have Daniel Roberts, also from the United States. What happened? Well, also at the New York City Grand Prix, Roberts ran 13.17 seconds in the 110 meter hurdles. He got third place, of course, behind Grant Holloway, who ran 13.06, and then Devin Allen, who ran that 12.84 second run, number three all time in the hurdles. But why does this matter for Daniel Roberts? Well, 13.17 is a season's best for Roberts. It's number six in the world this year. And again, he's behind um, Devin Allen. He's behind Grant Holloway, Trey Cunningham, right? A couple other guys that he's behind in the United States. But last year, he only ran faster than this uh, time on two occasions. 13.11 seconds at the US Olympic trials and then 13.16 seconds at one of the Diamond Leagues later in the season. So he's already ahead of schedule from where he was at last year. He only entered the Olympic trials last year running 13.2 seconds. Now, like I said, the 110 meter hurdles is super stacked this year, but do remember the United States gets four athletes to go to the world championships. Grant Holloway already has that wild card because he's a defending champion. So top three of Grant Holloway is gonna run at trial. So whoever gets the top four are going to, going to be the team. In 2019, Daniel Roberts, he was the US champion. He went to Doha, he unfortunately got disqualified, but I think this bodes very well for him. Don't forget, he has that personal best of 13 seconds flat from 2019. So already on pace, faster than he was in 2021. Look out for Daniel Roberts. Daniel Roberts coming off the 110s here in New York City. Just tell me how you feeling today. Feel pretty good. Definitely a lot better race than I've had the rest of the season. Yeah. Probably we getting there. 
getting things right one one thing at a time, one race at a time, getting ready for USA. Nice, nice. And I feel like, I mean, of course, 2019 was amazing. And, you know, a little hiccup at Worlds, but I feel like you've been getting pushed out of the conversation. I feel like you should still be there. Like, what are you, how are you feeling going into USA's this year? I'm um, definitely, definitely an underdog, but I feel like I've been that way my whole life. I like riding low key, but at the same time, I know where I should be. I know I should be on top, so I'm just grinding, putting the work on the low, and trying to pop out when, I, when I'm ready. So. Nice, nice. Moving over to the 200 meters, we have to talk about Kyrie King. Now, what happened? Well, also at the New York City Grand Prix, in the 200 meters, Kyrie King ran 20.02 seconds. Second place behind Noah Lyles' is a amazing performance of 19.61 seconds. Of course, he ran away with that race. But why does this matter for Kyrie King? Well, this is a personal best for Kyrie King. This improves upon his personal best of 20.15 seconds from last year in 2021. So really significant improvement all the way down to 20.02 seconds. He is on the cusp of breaking that 20 second barrier. He is right there, just two hundredths of a second away and uh, he'll be able to get to that barrier. Now that makes him 11th in the world and one of the challenges in the 200 meters is that nine of the 10 people who are ahead of him are all American. So that 200 meter team for the United States is gonna be extremely hard to make, but this does bode well for Kyrie King. He made the US team back in 2017, right? So about five years ago. So you never know. I do th think though this bodes well for him to at least break into that 20 second barrier, run 19 something when we get to USA's in just a couple weeks time. Now we're gonna finish things off with two ladies from the NCAA championships. We have Rosemary Chukuma and Grace Unwakocha. Chukuma competes for Texas Tech and Unkocha competes for North Carolina a &T. What happened? Well, both of these ladies, they compete for Nigeria and at the NCAA championships in the 100 meters, in the semifinals, Mwokocha ran 10.97 seconds and Chukuma ran 10.99 seconds. Why does this matter? Both of them qualified along with Favro Philly for the NCAA 100 meter final. That was the first time in history that three Nigerian ladies had ever made it to the finals of the NCAA in the 100 meters. So real strong history there. In addition, this was the first time in history, in any year in history, that three Nigerian ladies had ever run sub 11 seconds. Again, along with Favro Fili, Mwakocha, and Chukuma, all going under 11 seconds in that 100 meters. Now, this does bode well for all these ladies because it's showing us that Nigeria is going to have a very strong team going to the World Championships and specifically in that women's four by one. Of course you have Jamaica, of course you have the United States, but there is kind of an open gap and probably a lot of teams who are vying for that third spot. You know, again, assuming handoffs are all clean, but I think Nigeria is gonna be putting themselves in contention to potentially get on that podium in the four by one, considering how these ladies have been running. So these are some of the athletes that we wanted to highlight. Again, a lot of these athletes are making a significant progress through the 2022 season. You may not see some of these athletes make the US team. You may see some of them surprise and actually make it onto the US team. So go in the comments below. Let me know a couple other athletes who are kind of going under the radar and do deserve some recognition. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back again next time. Thanks.